Okay, so question nine, we're almost there. This is a question about questionnaires and collecting data. So the doctor wants to encourage her patients to take more exercise, and the doctor has approximately 500 patients. She decides to take a survey about what, uh, do a survey about what exercise her patients take. This is the question, so you don't need to answer this, you just need to look at it. What's wrong with the question? Well, do you exercise is, uh, the question is really vague. The question is very vague. It gives no indication of uh, the time frame to look at. So the question is really vague. It, it doesn't say do you, how many times you exercise a week. Does it? I mean, do you exercise? I mean, it's just what in your life or just in the last hour. I don't know. It's very difficult to tell. Um, so that's the problem. The problem with the response section is that that it's confusing. The response section is too confusing. So what do I mean by that? Well, if someone says, do you exercise? Yes, no, sometimes, every day. Well, if I exercise, yes, I exercise every day. and But that also applies to every day. Okay, or yes, I do exercise, but only sometimes. That means I could tick this box and this box. But it says tick a box. I mean, it's, it's too confusing. There's um, People will not be sure what, yeah, not sure what box to tick, basically. It's not clear. Not sure what box to tick. Okay, so that's the problem with the question and the answer box, the response section. Let's look at the second part. This is another question in the survey. Give a suitable response section. So the question says, how many miles did you walk last week? Well, you've got to have an option. You've got to have an option so someone, so maybe say, tick a box, and then you have a box that says zero miles, okay? Um, and then you might have another box they could sit tick that says above one to two miles. Oh, above zero, because otherwise there'll be a gap. So not exactly zero, but above zero. Then you could say above two to four miles. And then you could say above four to six miles. And then what happens if someone walks really, really far? So you just have a box at the end that's out. open-ended. You just say above six miles. So you have basically a box that says zero, zero to two, two to four, four to six, and six. But it's very important you phrase it so you don't um, double count. So you don't have a box that basically says nor, nor to one, one to two, Oops, one to two, two to three. Because if I walked exactly two miles or exactly one mile or exactly zero miles, I wouldn't know which box it ticks. I could always tick more than one box. So this is a bad thing to do. So it's good to kind of say above zero to two, above two to four. So you're kind of including everything. There's no gaps. You're not missing any numbers out. And also, if someone walks a lot, they've ticked on this end. And if someone doesn't do any walking, they tick there. Okay? Very careful about that. Worth watching again, maybe. Part C says, well, let's just look at my answers. It says the doctor with well, three methods. The doctor decides to use one of these three methods to do a survey. So either give it to the first 50 patients, method two is give it to choose 50 patients at random, or method three, choose 20, 26 patients, picking one whose surname begins with each letter. What's the problem with method, method three? Well, you can give two answers. You don't only need to choose one of them, but there's two answers. Uh, 26 is not... enough people to ask. Okay, so basically the sample is too small. She's chosen to ask not, she's, or her, him or her, chosen to ask not enough people, 26. If you've got 500 patients, it's 20, asking 26 is really not really enough. Or you could say that um, there may not be 
some people with some surnames. So surnames that maybe begin with X or Q or Z or, or some letters, they may not have anyone that closes that. So choose 26 patients picking one whose surname begins with each letter of the alphabet, you might not have someone that begins with the letter Z, so you might not be able to pick that person. So it's a big problem. You only have to choose one of these two. Which of the other two methods uh, for doing the survey will give you the most reliable uh, results? Well, you can. I think method two. I think method two is going to give you. So you're choosing your reason for choice. Uh, so method two is a random sample uh, that will ask a variety of people oh, variety of people spread across the day and week. So just asking the first just asking the first 50 is not really good enough. I think you want to ask people uh, a spread across the week so you kind of get a cross section so not those people that are going to be there first thing in the morning or on a Monday or whatever it is you just want to ask so method two is kind of random it's going to give you spread out people across the day and also give you different people from different days of the week so that's why it's the best method okay